Today on Ag Etc, meet the Greenwood County Cattle Women, a group dedicated to promote beef and educate about the truth behind agriculture. Then Jacqueline Leffler talks about growing up on the farm and how it led her to become involved in the Kansas Farm Bureau. Tammy Alexander with Metropolitan Energy Center explains how Central Kansas Clean Cities program provides incentives for diesel drivers, a program supported by Kansas Soybean. Electronic cattle ID was introduced to a Texas ranch over eight years ago. See how it has changed their operation. It's all coming up on Ag Etc. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that? Call me, let's have a discussion. 316-945-6733. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. About six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulder sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better and didn't get better. I heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Got down there at eight o'clock in the morning and by 11.30, the procedure was all over and it just kept getting better and better. And within six weeks, I was back digging post holes and doing the other hard work that I'd been doing before the accident. And I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. I'm Jamie Linda Mood, and I'm with the Greenwood County Cattlewomen, these ladies. And uh, we got started in social media because we wanted to share our story um, about the Flint Hills and Greenwood County and producing beef. And we naturally fell into doing this system of taking a week at a time and <clears throat> just sharing our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, in agriculture, every day is different. Some days are really great. Some days are really, really bad. Um, and sharing that with the consumer is incredibly important and becoming more important every day. So we just decided that as a group that we could all together do this because it is quite a large feat to take on this task. And so working together and only having to do it once a month for a week versus having to do it every day just became um, very natural for all of us. And so it's much easier to tackle it um, and then have three weeks off a month, so. So um, who we are targeting is really our consumer um, as a whole, but we, we tend to, as the four of us are um, not only ranch wives, we're also moms of kids on the ranch. We feel like we have a connection with other moms as well. And so if we can share our story that somehow relates to moms, um, they are the ones um, buying the food, uh, serving the food, cooking it. Um, they're the ones that probably ultimately are concerned about the nutrition that their children are getting every day. Um, and um, for years and years, I think the cowboys, farmers, ranchers, they were kind of held up and they were um, celebrities to a point. And um, I think unfortunately, because of misinformation and things that have gotten out there, we aren't quite that um, anymore. We are looked at a lot more negatively. And if we can share the story and the truth of what we're saying to um, these moms and get that across, um, I think that's important. I'm Amy Perrier and I am also with the Greenwood County Cattlewomen and one of the things that we really try to focus on when we're sharing on social media is being positive, um, not, you know, we try to share what we love and not bash what we hate. So there are certainly things that are out there that 
um, you know, we would like to, to bash on, but we really try to avoid that um, and just try to give the actual um, truth. And that's really what we try to do every day is just to capture our lives. Um, we are moms and we want to capture our lives with our children anyhow. And so we just build it into this format of being able to share that life um, and show exactly what we do as farmers and ranchers on a daily basis um, and give that, that truth behind uh, what we do. We try to share some of the science aspect and, and the educational part of it, but mostly we're just sharing and showing um, our daily lives uh, so others that aren't involved in, in agriculture, um, and that's 98% of, of the world is not involved in agriculture, so that they can really get uh, a true light into what we do on a daily basis. Stay tuned after the break for more from the Greenwood County Cattlewomen. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Kansas Farm Bureau has served farm families and rural Kansas for more than 100 years, and we're pleased to offer new health care coverage choices for Kansans in 2020 through Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter what stage of life you're in, we'll have options that fit your lifestyle. Plus, our network of providers is one of the largest available throughout the state of Kansas and beyond. For more information, including the different plans available, or to get a quote, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Anna Curry with the Greenwood County Cattlewomen. Um, currently, we are utilizing Facebook and Instagram to connect with our target audience, which is moms, much like ourselves, only in an urban setting. Um, we found that this is a platform that they are likely to use, likely to connect with. Um, it's easy for us to utilize hashtags, utilize sharing of our stories. Um, we've also found that the content that we create is very shareable. When we have people that like to share our content, it just only helps to broaden our audience more and more. Um, also by creating a team and having the four of us work together, it's not so overwhelming. We try to have one to two major posts per day and then also share throughout the stories feature. Um, use, utilizing that stories feature can get overwhelming. If you're really trying to capture your entire day, um, you're trying to make sure that things not only go well in your farming and ranching operation, that your kids are not um, falling off the top of a hay bale, but that you're trying to capture all of this and make sure no one's dying at the same time, it can be a little bit overwhelming. But these platforms have become something that we're getting more familiar with all the time. We're feeling better about utilizing their capabilities. Um, and having the four of us having one week where we can kind of map out our story from start to finish really works well for us. So um, we are on Instagram and Facebook and would love for you to follow us at GWC Cattle Women. Um, and ask us questions, reach out to us, but also see some examples of how we do things. You can see things just like we do, things that go over really well, some other things that don't do well. Um, it happens frequently that we think something will be very successful and it's not. And then other things we're like, can you believe how good, that, <laughs> how well that was taken and how many times it was shared? So um, social media is certainly not a black and white area. And for moms that are busy to get comfortable with it. It's um, a whole new thing that we're trying to um, learn as we're doing. So, um, but watch us and we would like to help you any way that we can. So, 
it's our You Are Here program and our five things that we teach all of the kids about Greenwood County and it kind of extends into our social media is number five out of 105 counties in Kansas, Greenwood County is the fifth largest. Number four, um, there's only 4% of the tall grass prairie remaining in the country and um, all of that resides in the Flint Hills. Um, number three, uh, three percent, it's actually two to three percent of the population is still involved in agriculture. Um, however, we do start with how many of you are involved in agriculture and only a couple of them raise their hands and we remind them that no one came to school naked and everyone has eaten today. So everyone's involved in agriculture. Um, number two, cattle outnumber people two to one in our state. And um, number one, that we think that they are one lucky kid to live in such a unique place. And I think that that is what we're trying to share is um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in agriculture or architecture or you're an attorney. Um, if you are running a business in Kansas, it is difficult to make Kansas sexy enough for kids to want to come back to Kansas and practice their trade. So we are trying to share how unique and special Kansas is and make people proud of where they came from so that they'll want to come back and practice in agriculture, hopefully with our children or your children, but also um, if they're coming back and they want to practice some other business that they want to come back and do it here at home. I think that's something that's special for us. Our story is not unique to us and things that seem mundane to us, um, such as feeding a bucket calf or doing chores, those aren't special to us. But that's the thing that actually resonates so well across the country. And we've connected with moms um, across the United States, actually, and they've messaged, messaged us about how interesting it is for them to see us do chores, how interesting it is for us to feed cattle, how interesting it is to see a tractor and bay um, so that, although we don't feel that we are unique, we do have a unique story to tell. And while I think that, um, you know, as they said before, that 98% um, of the people, you know, it used to be that you had a grandparent or an aunt and uncle at um, on the farm. And, and honestly, today, that is not um, the case at all. And so by sharing our story, even though it's social media and that's different to us, that is how those people are connecting to us. That's their way that they connect with anything. I mean, um, and so if we can just share our story through social media and um, just give them a little piece of that, no, they can't see it and smell it and touch it, but we can share that with us. And I think um, they learn to trust us. So then they will hopefully come to us for questions. Um, and then um, just, just have an opportunity to show them how much we love what we are doing. And we aren't doing this only as a business proposition. This is truly what we are doing as our lives and how we are raising our t children and that it's all entangled together. And so. So I would just say don't discount what you do on a daily basis as being uninteresting or unimportant. Um, you know, who would have thought that Laura Ingalls Wilder's story about pioneer women would be interesting? I'm sure that they didn't at the time. Um, but, you know, we are sort of um, on a last frontier as far as what we do because so many people are so removed from it. So something that seems very normal and everyday to you would actually, could actually be very interesting to someone else because there are people, there aren't just people out there that want to bash us or be negative about farming and ranching. There are people out there that truly want to understand what we do and they want to hear from us. And they're so thankful when they hear that side of it because they've been told something very negative and they, they really want to trust us and they want to rely on us for their food. And so, um, you know, that story that we have to share is very important regardless of what we think. And find yourself a team because yes. although the four of us are very similar in so many ways, as we kind of have progressed through this, we actually see so many differences between us. We all um, have children. They're all relatively the same age. Um, we None of us grew up in Greenwood County, but all are very um, community-minded when it comes to our county and proud of where we are. and want to better where we are and want our kids to come back to it. Um, so all of these things that make us really different, um, they actually seem very similar to anyone on the outside. And I think it makes us very unique in the way that we present our stories and um, ourselves and our families and our operations as well when it comes to our turn on social media for the cattle women.
Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas. We work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yet we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. Okay, looks like it's time for our tour. Welcome to the Fort Wallace Museum. Here at the museum, you're going to find some really interesting stuff, like our replica stagecoach from the Butterfield Overland Dispatch. We've got facades from the fort buildings. We've got an 1870s flag. There's a plesiosaur that was discovered locally. We've got the Ray Pump Organ Collection. We're a little bit place with a great big story and we'd love to have you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. So I'm a fourth generation farm and rancher full time in Americus, Kansas with my dad and the rest of my family. We raise corn, soybeans, and wheat. And we also have a stalker and feeder operation um, and a small backgrounding feedlot. Um, I got involved in Farm Bureau. It's always been a family thing, so I'm the third generation that's been involved at the state level. Um, I sit on our county board in Lyon County. I'm the vice president. And I got involved at the state level in Farm Bureau through Leadership KFB. Um, I went through that program and got mentored through Jill Caston and just had a phenomenal time. Um, learned a lot, got loved a lot, and really just built a confidence to share my story and what that looks like here um, in Kansas and agriculture. Yeah, so I think just growing up, you know, I watched my, my dad and my grandma and grandpa all be super involved in Farm Bureau, and it, it really showed me how important it is that we get our message out um, of what it's like to just be in agriculture in Kansas. And I think one of those ways is just, you know, competing in different um, competitions that Farm Bureau has available and one of those is the discussion meet and so when I was at AFBF last year I watched Jackie Munt um, compete and she was also in my leadership KFB class and so it kind of gave me a leg up on watching her prepare and compete and um, just you know getting to do that and watch her do it kind of gave me a, a good chance at being able to figure out how to do it myself. For me personally uh, since I'm in ag every day um, on our farm and ranch I've just kind of pulled each question to see which one kind of fits with my story. Um, and so first off, I've just kind of written down personal touches at each question and how it's impacted our business. Um, and this way, it's just easy. It's, it's right there at the tip of my tongue. And then right now, I'm starting to talk to experts. Um, so today, um, I'm going to take advantage of running into several people here um, at KFB annual meeting, um, getting ready to meet with you know, a couple of the legislators, staffers, and talk to them about some questions and get some good ideas and topics from them that maybe I can write down and, and put in my arsenal of notes that I have. Yeah, so I think just, you know, really learning how to engage with the consumer. Um, they are our end goal, essentially, and so a lot of the questions do partake um, to consumers and how maybe they view agriculture or how we get different messages out to them. One of the main topics um, that I'm excited about is fake meat. I have a custom beef for butcher business and so a lot of the Netflix documentaries that are coming out and kind of combating whether or not meat is good for you um, has directly impacted my business and so it's given me reason to make sure I get that research and figure out you know how do I talk to the consumer um, that is my client um, and so that's that's kind of the main thing that I plan on taking back home. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. 
Kansans have a new choice for Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans. With Medicare Supplement Insurance Plans from Kansas Farm Bureau, you have access to four levels of coverage, affordable rates, and service from an organization that served Kansans for more than 100 years. For more information on Kansas Farm Bureau Medicare Supplement Plans, including rates and to apply, visit kfbhealthplans.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Uh, hi, I'm Tammy Alexander I'm from Metropolitan Energy Center, and I work with the Central Kansas Clean Cities Program. Uh, which is a program that works to reduce alternative fuel use, um, to increase alternative fuel use by reducing petroleum use in transportation. Um, a lot of the work that we do has to do with biofuels, uh, specifically biodiesel. Um, we've done a lot of work in the past year consulting with fleets and retailers to try to expand the use of biodiesel and expand the availability of biodiesel throughout the state. The questions and concerns uh, depend upon uh, the individual. A lot of the concerns that we've been, had when we've met with uh, fuel retailers, they're interested in offering biodiesel. Um, they have concerns about environmental issues with petroleum diesel, and they know biodiesel is a much better product. Um, but the issues with the uh, tax credit uh, being, is it happening, is it not, um, have been an issue. It makes it difficult for them to offer biodiesel blends um, when they're not sure how that's going to work out financially for them. Um, and so that's, that's definitely a real world, real world concern that, that we've had and that we've ne needed to dealt, deal with in the past year. So. Uh, of course, the uh, recent announcement this week that the Senate and the, the House had approved a, a bill for the alternative fuel tax credit, that's helpful. Um, once we get that signed, um, if we can get a continuation of that, that would be wonderful and that would really help the economics. Um, I think a bigger issue is that uh, we just really need to recognize as maybe a society that we have to get to something that's different from petroleum for our transportation. Transportation is the number one emitter of greenhouse gases. And so if we can get into biofuels and, and other options that are much cleaner for transportation, that will go a long way in reducing those issues and, and dealing with some of the issues that we have from e excess greenhouse gases. Uh, part of it has to do with the economy. Um, we're, we're, you know, I guess we've been out of the recession now for a couple of years, but people still have that in their recent memory. Um, the big concern is how much is it going to take to fill my tank? So that's been a concern. Um, it's also that we have such wonderful weather here in Kansas. We don't deal with the day-to-day -day pollution issues that some of the areas with different geographical uh, layouts have. Um, we have the wind here. We have bl blue skies. It's hard to realize here in Kansas that we have some of those issues with pollution from petroleum products. Um, but uh, that I think is changing. Um, people are becoming more educated on the process. They, they know that it's a concern and that we need to be thinking about this for the future. And so I'm hopeful that that will, that will and I've already seen that it is, it is uh, educating people and that they do know that it's something that we need to think about and a lot more people are thinking about it now. Our website is uh, www.metroenergy.org and you can find out about our uh, clean transportation options through the uh, clean, clean Cities programs. Uh, we have the Kansas City Regional Clean Cities Coalition and the Central Kansas Clean Cities Coalition. Uh, there's also the Alternative Fuels Data Center, which is at afdc.energy.gov. And there's information about all kinds of alternative fuels, but uh, you can click on biodiesel and you can get all kinds of information about biodiesel, including vehicle options, where you can find biodiesel throughout the country. Uh, there's a locator map and different information like that. What if U.S. soybean meal were more than a commodity? If seed companies and the soybean checkoff built a better variety? That future is here. The time is now. To meet end-user demands, the soybean checkoff is investing in the compositional quality of soybeans, including meal. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. 
Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Clyde Sutton, Nest City, Kansas. Lived on this place all my life. About a year and a half ago, got to where I couldn't saddle a horse. The pain was terrible. Read about stem cell. First it wasn't for me, then they started doing neck and back. Went and had it done. As you can see, I saddled a horse. I'm still building fence. Love to shoot a shotgun rifle, and I'm able to participate. Not like I used to, but nevertheless I can do the things I used to do, and life is good. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if your cattle get out, you could be held liable for that. Call me, let's have a discussion. 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Eight years ago, the Four Sixes Ranch in Texas began using electronic ID while they moved cows to ranches in five other states. We were forced into it through the drought. I saw the uh, the disadvantages of the metal tags, uh, the, the increased stress on the cattle and the increased labor, uh, it just wasn't realistic for us to keep operating that way. Lather's experience made him an easy choice to co-chair the Producer Traceability Council, which aims to ensure the coming federal traceability program is based on common sense. So we're in the driver's seat not only to develop the program, but we're in the driver's seat to figure out how we're going to get it paid for and an opportunity to change the way that we do business uh, in the cattle industry. And I'm afraid we're going to miss it if we don't unify. Cattlemen working together with tech companies can create a logical program over the next few years to replace the current metal tags. The ultra high frequency right now is probably the most advanced technology that we have available to us. Uh, it's more or less hands free. You can read groups of cattle instead of, you don't have to read individual cattle. You can read groups of cattle as they move down alleys or as they go on trucks uh, or as they come off trucks, uh, as they're co-mingled and you don't have to run them back down a chute and uh, single file them in order to get a read. On the four sixes, that kind of traceability ID is a management tool that pays for itself, but consumer demand is the main driver in adding value. The reality of it is uh, we need a traceability program for our consumers so that we can give them what they want. We don't dictate what they want, they dictate to us and we need to meet their demands. In doing so, the cattle community can keep customers happy and avoid local events causing widespread market disruptions. I'm Bob Cervera. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com.